Let's add something more interesting to our scene. Head over to your hierarchy menu and right click on some empty space. And you'll notice we have a bunch of options for things to create. 3D and 2D objects, various effects that we can add to our experiences, lighting, audio, the ability to embed video, UI, which stands for user interface, meaning buttons and text and interactable menus, and finally, an extra camera or two or three, depending on how many perspectives you want to offer the player in their experience. For now, we're going to focus simply on 3D objects. We call these, at least the top portion of these objects, primitives. They're basic, simple, customizable shapes that we use often to kind of represent prototype ideas, or we can combine them together to make more complex things in the long run. Although our graphics designers will be using Blender to mainly create our assets, and we often used to use these for kind of prototyping and play testing. We won't worry about some of the more complex ones till further down the line. Let's click to create a cube and see how it appears in our scene. Over on the right, with our cube selected under the inspector, we can see some of the settings that we can change. You may have these this mesh renderer opened up. Close it up for now. We're going to worry about that a bit further down the line, as well as the box collider. For now, all we want to worry about is this transform option. Transform is responsible for changing the position, rotation, and scale of our object. So we have a few different ways that we can alter these components. Spot one is up on our toolbar. We have some tools that we can use for this purpose. Spot two is in the scene itself with these little arrows that we're seeing on the screen. And spot three is actually in the transform menu. Let's start over here. I can click in any of these boxes and type a number to have my object moved to that position. I've just set it to 0, 0, 0, kind of the origin point of this 3D world. However, I can also click on the letter beside that box and drag to position it in more of a kind of a seamless fine tune way. And in addition, I can actually click on my screen and click on these little bars to move it around in those three different dimensions. How do you know what these dimensions correlate to? What is X, Y, and Z? Up in the top right corner of your scene view, you should see a little bit of a kind of a compass guide that allows you to see, and it rotates along with you, that Y, in my perspective right now, is up and down, Z is left and right, and that would mean that X is in and out. But if I swing around 90 degrees, now X is left and right, Y is up and down, and Z is in and out. And we're gonna have to build a bit of an intuition for these perspectives as we develop further, but for now you have a nice reference guide and trial and error is also a great way of doing this as well. Finally, we have some other tool options that we can use to help us with some of our other settings. Of course, with rotation, I can just go 90 degrees. Well, it's kind of hard to see with the cube. Let's go 45 and tilt it 45 and 45. So I've really adjusted the rotations or I can swing it back to my normal rotations. And scale, let's double, double, double. And I can make this twice the size overall. So I can customize it there as well as click and drag for any of these settings, just to manually manipulate them on the side there. But we also have some handy dandy tools that we can choose. Our movement tool is selected on the top right now. Notice W is the hotkey for selecting it. E is the hotkey for our rotations. And we see these different axes that now we can click on and rotate our object around those axes. And we often have to kind of zoom around in our scene here to see a bit of a better perspective for this. But yeah, I can manipulate the rotation. And finally, if I choose the R key or click up here with a scale tool, that allows me to click on an edge and stretch it directly or the middle of the object. You see this kind of middle box inside the center of this. If I click and drag on that, it scales everything proportionally. So now I have the ability to really customize how this object looks. Maybe I want to make, I'm just going to reset everything back to zero values here. Although actually I want my scale to be one, one, one. And I want this to be a particular looking type of thing that maybe has a lot of length, a little bit of width, maybe it's a little bit thinner, some kind of a platform. And maybe I want it tilted a little bit so that it's kind of a ramp in my game. And then I wanna kind of just shift it around maybe a little bit higher so it's there and bam, I've been able to manipulate this object. Spend some time creating some primitives. Remember we can click here, 3D object, some different types, maybe make a sphere play around with it, see how it works with some of our different settings for scaling, for actually moving it around, for rotating it, although it's kind of hard to see a sphere rotating. 
play around with it and develop a bit of an intuition for how we can manipulate these primitive 3D objects in Unity.